I've said it countless times before, I think Tmux is a really cool project. Whether it's the tabbing functionality or the tiling functionality or the SSH integration or the process management or the session management and all of the other fun stuff that Tmux can do, I think for certain kinds of people, Tmux is an incredibly useful application. However, for my personal workflow, I just don't find Tmux that useful. But there are certain parts which are really, really cool. One of those being running multiple processes at the same time and having a, I guess, tabbing functionality. And today we're looking at a project that does basically that. This is Mprox. Now don't get it twisted. This is never going to be a full replacement for Tmux. The dev has explicitly stated that's the case. If you want to use Tmux, just go and use Tmux. But if you just want to have this simple way to run multiple things at the same time, mprox might be right up your alley. So the way it works is very simple. We have the process list on the left, and then the view of the current application on the right. Now, to actually go and navigate the process list, we have to make sure we are currently focused on it. So the way we change focus is by pressing Control A. You're going to know that you're on the actual application window because all of the hotkeys down here have disappeared, also, you might be able to see it in the video, but there is a slightly different white. This is based on my terminal theme, not the way necessarily the application is going to look on your system. The main thing you can look at is whether the help bar actually has help. So if we go and press Control A again, now we are over on the process list. So we can navigate this list either by using the up and down arrow keys, and the list is going to be cyclic, or using the J and K keys, whichever ones we prefer. And each of these processes are going to run independently from each other. So let's say I had something like a Pac-Man instance, or I had a web server, or I had a game server, or something like that, and I was just sitting here just typing stuff in Vim, doing what I would normally do in Vim, all of that stuff is going to continue running while I'm doing stuff in a separate process. This is the benefit of having a tabbing system over something like using your shell's built-in suspending system. Because when you suspend a process, it is going to be temporarily paused. It still lets you easily switch between stuff, but this gives you the ability to work on multiple things at the same time. Now, obviously, Mprox isn't going to magically know what programs you need to use. So there's a couple of ways to add programs. One of them is when the application is actually running. Now, the hotkeys down here doesn't actually list the way to add something, but the way you do that is by pressing the A key. And then we can go and just type the command for anything we want to run. Let's say I wanted to use something like um, man, Pac-Man, for example. And then down here, we're going to have the man page for Pac-Man. But as you might expect, you can also start up processes as you launch Mprox. So to quit Mprox, we either press Q or capital Q. Now these actually do something different. So Q is going to send SIG term to every process. This is going to wait for them to successfully exit. And then when they do, Mprox will quit. Whereas capital Q is going to send SIG kill, which basically forces them to exit. Assuming that none of the applications have stopped responding though, these are going to work exactly the same way. And you can see it right here. Basically, you just list out everything you want to open. So obviously, if it's something that has multiple options, multiple words, things like that, obviously put it inside of quotes. Otherwise, they'll be treated as separate commands. But let's actually go and do that and see what happens. So we're actually going to have a couple of things listed as down. So this can mean a couple of different things. One of them is the command physically cannot run. And the other thing is, if the application that's in that window is currently quit. So if we go and quit out of LF here, it's now going to say it's down. Currently, there's no way to modify any of these commands. So basically, all you can do is delete the process with the D key and then re-add it. Now, one thing to note with deleting something is if something is currently in the up state, it cannot be deleted. But when something just is down because you quit it or maybe it crashed or anything like that, you can actually go and restart it. This is done not with the restart button, that has a different purpose. Instead, this is done by just pressing S. And then assuming the command still actually works, it is going to restart the application. Now, what the restart button does is basically reload something that is already open. This is really obvious if I do it in something like, say, NVIM, for example. So let's go and type some text in here and then go out to the process list 
if I now press R, it is going to completely delete everything that was there and give us the basic application. It would probably make more sense if the restart button would also do a start if something wasn't started, but it is what it is. Now, like with quitting the whole application, we also have the option to quit individual processes in two separate ways, either X for SIG term or capital X for SIG kill. And like with quitting the whole application, most of the time it's going to be the same thing. There is also a third option for opening up applications. This is done with the mprox configuration file. Now, unlike a lot of applications out there, it doesn't have a set location. So right now, it is located in my home directory. So you can put this anywhere on your system. Because when you launch up mprox, the way you use the config is with dash dash config and then pass in whatever the path is. So in this case, it is going to my home directory and it looks like this. Now, you might notice one other thing. The names in here look a little bit weird. The config also lets you give, I guess, aliases or nicknames to the programs you want to open. Or if there is a config in your current working directory and you don't define a config to load, that config is always going to be loaded. So let's go and have a look at the file. That is the mprox.yaml. Now, the name doesn't matter. Call it literally whatever you want. So the root or top of the tree, I don't know YAML terms, the thing at the top is always going to be called prox. And then inside of that, we can start defining what processes we want to use. Now, the name that you use as the key, this is going to be the nickname of that application. So in this case, I've got file manager for LF, I've got editor for NVIM, and then resource manager for HTOP. Now, you don't have to use all three of these different forms when you're actually setting the applications. They're just here to demonstrate what they are. First option is just setting the value to whatever you want to run. This is going to support having multiple options, so you can do something like, you know, man, Pac-Man. You know what? I'm going to do man, Pac-Man for everything, so we can see that it all works. The second option is defining the command array. So you have the key B command, and then have an array of, you know, everything you want to be running. So in this case, man with the second option being Pac-Man, and then you'd have another option, another option, so on and so forth. Then the third option is breaking it down into shell and emph. So the only reason to use this form is if you need to go and pass in any environment variables into the application, have anything custom from your regular environment. Generally, this isn't something you're going to need to do, but when it is, it's certainly a nice option. So in this case, once again, like with the first option, we can do something like man and then pac-man to have multiple options. And then when defining the environment variables, you have the emph section, and then indented under that, you will have the key being the name of the variable, and then the value being the value of the variable. So if we go and save and quit this, I'll get to the server thing in just a moment, but save and quit this, and then open up mprox with that config, as you can see, everything is running like we'd expect. So the server functionality is going to let you control the application outside of the application. But by default, no IP address is going to be assigned. So the way we do that is with one of two options. Firstly, what we can do is by using the dash dash server option and then passing an IP address. Now, by default, it uses localhost because, you know, it's running on your local system on port 4050. Now, the port you use doesn't really matter as long as it's a port that's not being used by something else. So let's go and open up. Also, let's say LF with this. And the way we control this is with the dash dash CTL option. Now, we also need to go and define what server we want to connect to. So dash dash server and then 127.0.0.1 on port 4050. Now, the commands you want to use in here are all defined over on the GitHub. So you can do things like quit the application, you can go to the next process, start a process, add a new process, and things like that. For now, all we're going to do is go and quit out of the process. So go and run this command in here, make sure you have it inside of a quote marks, and then as we're going to see, the process now quits. Your other option is going and setting the server inside of your config file. So 
as we can see right here down the bottom, we have server colon and then the IP address you want to connect to. Now, if you're running this inside of your working directory, this server is always going to get set. It's going to get set in the background. And what's going to happen there is you're going to realize you can't actually open up multiple instances of mprox at the same time. So if you have a server to find in your config, make sure that if you're opening it from the same working directory, you go and find a new server with that command. So while mprox is working well, it's a really cool application. There are some weird edge cases where things don't exactly play nicely. So if we go and open up mprox with something like btop, btop doesn't really know what to do. I'm not really sure what's going on. I don't know if there's a problem with the way that btop renders or if it's a problem with the way that this application renders. But this is the only application I've seen that doesn't function correctly Presumably there are others though. However, outside of BTOP, I've not seen anything that people actually care about. But anyway, let me know what you think of mprox in the comment section down below. Is this something you would ever actually, you know, want to go and use? I think it's a pretty cool application. I, for the most part, get what I need done using tiling and like my 10 different desktops, but I totally understand the appeal of using something like tabbing it's just not always for me because my Tyler already does effectively the same thing. But maybe you're different. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, 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 subscribe,